been a while since I've read Bostrom's paper on simulation. I'm not sure if he regards it as a proof or as a highly compelling argument that we live in a simulation. But I regard these as all existing in the same bucket of appeals to the supernatural. What is being claimed is we have an explanation for the reality we do observe in terms of a reality we don't observe, which is fine. It's just that in this case, we don't have something that's experimentally testable. We can explain the appearance of the universe, the physical reality we exist in, as being the way it is because God made it that way. And if that's the way you choose to go, there's no way that I can refute you by experiment. I can say things like it's a bad explanation because it's easily varied. It doesn't matter what the state of the universe was, you could always say that God did it. As similarly, the people on the other side of the ledger say, well, all possible physical realities with all the different laws of physics are out there somewhere. This megaverse type thing is out there. And you shouldn't be surprised at the way physical reality looks to you, that you live in this particular universe that is flourishing with life and seemingly bio-friendly and all that kind of stuff. Because, hey, the overwhelming majority of physical reality that's out there that we do not have access to isn't like that at all. We just occupy one tiny sliver of that physical reality. And that explains why you see what you see. Well, it's not far removed from, you know, Bostrom's idea of, well, we're already building virtual societies, you know, the Sims or computer games and so on inside of our computers. In fact, some of us are, some cosmologists are already simulating basically uh, mini universes inside of their supercomputers. You can imagine that in the distant future with more powerful computers still, lots of memory, a quantum processor or something like that, then in the distant future, many more people will be simulating entire universes to much higher fidelity to the point where the accuracy of the simulation is so great that there will be planets in that simulation upon which there are people who are thinking and able to actually come up with their own computers which are able to simulate universes and so on it goes in this fractal type way. I've talked about this many times on TopCast before. And so that's another way to explain the universe that we do observe. It's just saying, well, it's part of a simulation and you should expect by a matter of probability to be in a simulated universe, not a real universe. Now, David's comment on that, if I remember it, is but that depends upon us assuming that a particular theory of computation, a model of computation, whether it be classical computation or quantum computation, is the one that governs everything. Do you have a particular computer in mind that this simulation is running on? Is it a regular computer, a classical computer? Is it a quantum computer? Is it some other kind of computation? The simulation hypothesis is silent on that, but I guess it assumes in the background what we're talking about are Turing machines. But this is not the only kind of computer. After all, that kind of computer only works in a universe where we have laws of physics that permit such computation to be done. Change the laws of physics and you will change your laws of computation and therefore the kind of computer and what it can simulate. So I don't think it helps. These kind of ultimate explanations, if you want to know deeply what is the nature of physical reality, saying we're running on a simulation, well, immediately anyone who's interested in fundamental answers, who's interested in explanations and not just thought experiments, my immediate question is, what are the laws of physics like where the computer is upon which this simulation, our universe, is running? What are those laws of physics? And where is that universe? Who governs that universe? Oh, that's just another simulated universe. Okay, I want to know about base reality. What's it like? How can we get out of this? So it raises more questions than it answers. I don't think it's any more helpful than, you know, Descartes' demon, Plato's cave. I put them all into the same bucket of conjectures about ultimate reality that we have great difficulty criticizing because they are, at base, an admission that regular realism is as it appears to be. So in other words, you can perform your scientific experiments, you can do mathematics, computation works the way that it does in our universe here in the simulation or inside of God's creation or inside of this part of the megaverse, whatever you want to call it. It is just base reality. Plus these other assumptions, you know, plus the assumption that, by the way, it's all a simulation and there are many such simulations and most of those simulated universes don't look anything like this one and no, you don't have access to the computer on which the simulation is running, that's in a different universe. And... 
realism plus needless philosophical baggage. And the needless philosophical baggage can be done away with as making the problem worse, not clarifying things, muddying the waters.